Amen. Amen. Whoever's out there, let me know if you can hear me okay. Amen. Can you hear me out there okay? <sighs> Hallelujah. <clears throat> amen, amen. What's up, Lancho? Can you hear me, Lancho? <clears throat> Can you hear me, Lancho? Thank you. Appreciate it. We'll get started at 707 as usual. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Master. Oh, Savior. Mm -hmm. We worship you, our Lord. We worship you. We worship you, Jesus. <laughs> Butter on the. <laughs> Come on, Butter. I pray that the message ministers, man. You know, you know when you prepare a message, and I prepare a message, man. It's like whatever I'm preparing a message for. Those things come at me, man. You know, and um. Um. Today's message is, is a good message and um, ministers to me before I got to minister, before God allows me to minister to you guys, amen, and, and it does, man. Um, we'll get started in 707. Praise the Lord, amen. <coughs> hey, Sylvia, how you doing? Been praying for you. I got a message tonight, <clears throat> and I pray it ministers to you guys, amen, hallelujah, good evening Vicky, God bless you, amen, share this on your page, amen, share this, this message, you can barely hear me right now Lencho, anybody else having a problem hearing me? <clears throat> Testing, testing, testing. One, two, three. Is this thing on? <clears throat> Can you hear me better, Lencho? Do I got to talk a little bit louder for some of you that use hearing aids? I'm just kidding. Don't get mad at me, okay? Sometimes I, gotta, I got some humor. George Lopez better watch out. 707 we're gonna go ahead and get started we got about two minutes just use my loud voice hey have you uh checked the volume have you checked the volume on your hearing aid lento i'm just kidding bro don't get mad anybody else having problems hearing me everybody else hear me okay Hallelujah. Sylvia, can you hear me okay? Vicky, can you hear me okay? All right. Something's wrong with Lencho's hearing then. He says he can barely hear me. But anyway, you know how we go once we get rolling and the Holy Spirit gets flowing. 
the voice will get rolling. Amen. Praise the Lord. Lencho, Lencho, I love you, bro. I love you, Lencho. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. 707. We got one more minute, and then we're going to open with the word of prayer, and then we're going to shando out with the word. Amen. And I pray that, that you have prepared yourselves. Amen. Prepared yourself spiritually to come and partake of the word of God, that all the contaminations and the distractions of the world, that you've removed them through prayer and, and said, I'm going to come and get fed, get my spirit fed. Amen. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Next week, next time before I go back on, I'll check the volume of the mic. I have it, uh, um, not the mic on my computer. I have a mic that I plug into my laptop. Amen. And uh, so that you guys could hear me better. Watch us right here. And I keep it right here all the time, and nobody's ever had a problem hearing me, but Lencho, today he says he has a problem hearing me, amen. But we're going to go ahead and get started. We're just going to open with a word of prayer. If you bow your head with me this evening, amen. Father, we just come before you tonight. Father God, as we thank you once again, God, to be here, Lord. There's no other place that we would rather be, God, than right here to hear your word, God, and to be in your presence, God. I ask and pray, God, that every heart and every mind be opened, God. Whether they hear this message now, whether they hear it later or down the road, Father God, I pray that their heart and their mind be open to receive your word, Father God. I pray as John 3.30 says, Father God, that I would decrease, God, that you would increase, God, that you would set me aside, Lord God, and that you would have your way, God. Let your word go forth, Father God, and let it fall on good soil tonight, God. We thank you and love you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to go ahead and get started. Um, before we do, I'm going to ask... Um, <clears throat> You guys keep a family of friends of mine uh, in prayer, the Blanco family. You know, um, John Blanco lost his, his uh, I don't want to say his fight, man. I don't want to say he lost his fight to stage four cancer. And I, I, I just, he just secured himself a place in heaven. And man, that's what he did. And um, like I mentioned earlier, one of my posts is, we don't understand why. Only God knows why. Why couldn't God heal him? I seen God heal people with stage four cancer before. I seen God heal with sicknesses. And we don't know why, amen. But we just got to trust the Lord through it all. Amen. And even when it hurts, man, and it hurts. Amen. This morning I woke up with a, just like with a heavy heart, man. And I just got into prayer and got into the presence of God. And, and really not saying nothing, man. But just just letting the worship music, man, just consume me and just take me into that place, man. Um, so I ask that you, uh, that you keep the Blanco family in prayer. Amen. Comfort and strength through this time, amen. And we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, the title of this message is Examine Yourself, Amen. Examine yourself, and we're gonna open up with the book of Acts, chapter 11, verse 21. And I'm gonna take you somewhere, so stay with me. And I ask that you share this path, this message, post it on your page, let other people get ministered to as well, amen. And the book of Acts, chapter 11, verse 21 says this, and the hand of the Lord was with them. And a large number who believed turned to the Lord. The news about them reached the ears of the church in Jerusalem. And they sent Barnabas off to Antioch. Verse 23. And when they arrived and witnessed the grace of God, he rejoiced and began to encourage. And began to encourage them all with a resolute heart to remain true to the Lord. For he was a good man and full of the Holy Spirit and faith. And considerable numbers were added to the Lord. Verse 25 says, And he left for Tarsus to look for Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. And for an entire year, they met with the church and taught considerable numbers of people. And the disciples, listen, and the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. Amen. Here was Paul and, and all the disciples were out there ministering. They were ministering and they were just taking the world for Jesus. Amen. They were they were consumed in the Holy Spirit. They had the fire of God and they were just going out there ministering. But the Bible says that this um the Barnabas went out to look for Saul. Amen. When he found him, he brought him back to Antioch, and for an entire year they met with the church and taught considerable numbers of people. And the disciples, he says, were first called Christians in Antioch. Amen. The disciples were first called Christians. The definition of a Christian is a Christ follower. Amen. To follow and imitate all the teachings and commandments of God. That's a Christian. How many Christians, by the raising of your hand, by the waving of your hand, by the amens, how many of you proclaim today that you're a Christian? Amen. That you're a Christian. The Bible says that they were first called Christians in Antioch. But the definition, the Greek definition of Christians is a follower of Christ. 
To be a Christian means you got to follow God. To follow God means that you imitate all of his teachings and, and understand and obey all of his commandments. That's what a Christian is today. Amen? That's the definition of a Christian. Amen? And I pray that after this message that you have a deeper understanding of what a true Christian is. Because there's so many people today that walk around and say they're Christians. They're Christians. I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. But yet, you watch them and their fruits will show you otherwise. Amen? I see it all the time. I'm a Christian. The Bible says that we were first called Christians in Antioch. Amen? But the, to be a Christian, the definition of Christian is to be a follower of Christ. It means that you're going to obey the commandments of God and you're going to walk according to the Word of God. Amen? But I see people that say, I'm a Christian, but their fruit doesn't show it. Amen? If you are a Christian today, there's got to be some fruit. Amen? And as we get into this Word, I pray that you have a deeper understanding of what it is to be a Christian, and you're not running around saying that loosely, that I'm a Christian, that you become a true Christian, that you become a true follower of Christ. Amen? The Word of God says in 2 Corinthians 5.17, He says this, and this is a familiar passage of scriptures, brothers and sisters. Therefore, if anyone, anyone is in Christ, this person is a new creation. The old things have passed away, and new things have come. See, that means that the day that you receive Christ into your life, the day that you've been baptized in the, in the Holy Spirit, that you are now a Christian. Amen? He says, the old things have passed away. That old life, that old way, it is now gone. Amen. Behold, new things are to come now. A new way of life, a new way of thinking, and a new way of walking. You are now a child of God. Amen. And there's got to be a transformation. There's got to be change. Now, you got to understand, just as I understand, it's not going to be an overnight thing. But now... The Bible says, if anyone be in Christ, he is a new creation. Now it's got to be a new way of life, a new way of thinking. When I got saved, I was instantly delivered from a nine-year cocaine addiction. Instantly delivered. And this coming November 13th will be 30 years, 30 years serving the Lord. And on that day, I'm going to share my testimony. Because not everybody knows my testimony. Not everybody knows how I got saved. See, I never had never been to church before the day that I got saved. And the day that I got saved, I had an instant deliverance from a cocaine addiction. God took me out of that gang life, that drug life, and everything else. And I've never been the same. God's willing November 13th will be 30 years serving the Lord. Amen? But... There's got to be a change. And the minute that that took place, man, I, man, my, my life radically, radically, radically changed, man, where I just became on fire for God. And just like the disciples right here, just like Saul of Tarsus, when he was converted, I, I, I just needed to share the gospel with everybody else. Amen. I needed to share the guy, and that's the way that is. See, I keep asking God, man, fuel the flame, God, fuel the flame, God, because I never want to lose that burning desire to share your word with somebody, amen? I never want to lose a passion that I have for those because that passion gives me compassion. The compassion gives me passion. They work together hand in hand to share the word of God, amen? And I never want to deviate from that. I want to keep that fire burning. I want to stay on the cutting edge of the gospel, sharing the gospel, amen? See, once you be, see, receive Christ and proclaim to be a Christian, now there needs to be transformation. The old ways are gone. The new life begins and the desire for the old things and the world should be gone. How many of you know today people that say that they're a Christian and they're still hanging out in the clubs and the bars, amen? They're still fornicating with the world, amen? They're still doing things that they shouldn't be doing, amen? I see it all the time. I see it all the time. Amen? Well, let me tell you, as Paul says that when you receive Christ, that, that you are a new creation now, there's got to be some things that got to change. And let's get into this because by the end of this message, you're going to understand why, I, why God gave me the title of this message to examine yourself. Amen. To examine yourself. Listen, now let's go to here. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17. We're going to begin there. And he says, so I say this and affirm that in the Lord that you are know, that you know, are to no longer walk, just as the Gentiles also walk, 
in the futility of their minds, he said, being darkened, he says, in their understanding, excluded from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the hardness of their heart. Amen? And they, having become calloused, have given themselves up to indecent behavior for the practice of every kind of impurity with greediness. He says with this, he says this, look at, he says this, but you did not learn Christ in this way. Amen? You did not learn Christ in this way. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught in him, just as the truth is in Jesus, that in reference to your former way of life, you are to rid yourselves of the old self which is being corrupted in accordance with the lust of deceit. You are to rid yourself. There's got to be a transformation. If you proclaim today to be a Christian, there better be a transformation in your life. Amen. You better not be hanging out with them old people from the world. Amen. Your old homeboys, your old homegirls, your old club members, your old bar hoppers. You shouldn't be hanging out with those people in the world. You shouldn't be in the bars. You shouldn't be in the clubs. Jesus isn't in there. So what are you doing in there? Amen? He says, you know to no longer walk just as the Gentiles also walk in the futility of their minds, being darkened in their understanding, excluded, excluded from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the hardness of their heart. You should no longer be walking that way. You should no longer be walking with anger. You should no longer be walking with bitterness. You should no longer be walking with jealousy. Amen? You should no longer. I understand. It takes time. It takes time, right? We're not going to be that person overnight. But there's got to be progress in your life. Amen? There's got to be the steps moving forward in the direction that God is calling you, that God has called you to become. There's got to be steps in that direction. We can't continue to fornicate with the world and say we're a Christian. We can't. Amen. We know what James 4.4 4 says, that if anybody be a friend of the world, that he is an enemy of God. Amen. If you are a friend of the world, you are an enemy to God. I didn't write this. It's in the Bible. If you read your word, you'll see it's there too. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. If we call ourselves Christians, then we must put off the old self daily. Because not if not, it will entice you back. It will pull you back into that world. I've seen it happen to so many Christians today. Amen? Amen? You've got to get rid of the foul mouth. You've got to get rid of that nasty attitude. And you've got to walk in the favor of God, in the presence of God, with the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, that you not know that your body is not your temple? It is the temple of the Holy Spirit. It no longer belongs to you. If the Holy Spirit is dwelling in you, why are we walking around with a foul mouth, speaking foul language? Why are we walking around with anger, bitterness, and resentment, and hatred to our brothers and sisters, and more so to the people of the world? See, we're not to hate the people of the world. We hate their sin, but we love those people. Amen? We love them. We love them. Amen? Hallelujah, Jesus. <coughs> Hallelujah. Verse 23 in Ephesians chapter 4. And that you are to be renewed in the spirit of your minds. Renewed in the spirit of your minds. Amen? And put on the new self which is in the likeness of God and has been created in righteousness and holiness of the truth. Put on the new self each morning when you get up. Each morning when you get up, amen, you need to get into the presence of God, not into the presence of Facebook, not into the presence of your TV. Roll out of bed, get on your knees, and get into the presence of God and ask God to clothe you in the garments of righteousness from up above, not in our own righteousness, because the Bible says that our righteousness is filthy rags, but to be clothed in the garments of righteousness, to renew your mind, amen, and to be filled with the Holy Spirit. See, a lot of you run out of the house without even talking to God. A lot of you run out of the house without even bringing Jesus along. A lot of you run out of the house without inviting the Holy Spirit to come with you. Amen? <clears throat> God is a gentleman. He'll never force His way into our lives. Just like He says in Revelation chapter 3, Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. God will knock. 
God will say, hey, are you going to let me in? Because he says, he who lets me in, I will dine with them. He who doesn't will dine alone. If you're not taking God outside the door with you, if you're not taking Jesus outside the door with you, if you're not taking the Holy Spirit outside the door with you, then you're running on your own strength and energy. If you're not getting in the presence of God in the morning, amen, you're running and leaning on your own understanding. And we know, we know what that's going to do to our lives. Amen. So he says that we need to be renewed in the spirits of our mind and put on the new self, which is in the likeness of God and be created in righteousness and holiness of the truth. Verse 25 says, Therefore, listen, therefore, ridding yourselves of falsehood, speak truth, each one of you, with his neighbors, because we are parts of one another. Be angry, he says, and do not let sin, yet do not sin, do not let sin go down on your anger. Do not give the devil an opportunity. Come on now, somebody. Come on. How many of you, without even realizing, uh, don't realize it, that you're allowing the devil an opportunity? When you run outside that door without God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit, you are now running on your own energy, your own strength. Amen. You are now going to lean on your own understanding because you don't have God and the Holy Spirit. You did invite them to walk with you out the door this morning. Amen. And you are now allowing the enemy an opportunity to entice you back. Amen to entice you back amen he says the one who steals must no longer steal but rather be must be he must <laughs> labor producing with his own hands what is good so that he will have something to share with the one who has need he says let come on let no unwholesome word come out of your mouth but if there's any good word for edification according to the need of the moment say that so that it will give grace to those that hear. Let no unwholesome word. You know what that means? Don't go around calling your co-worker stupid, lazy, dumb. Amen? Don't go around calling your kids. Amen? Names that you shouldn't be calling them. He says, let no unwholesome word come out of your mouth. But if there is any good for edification according for the need of the moment, say that. So it will give grace to those who hear. Edify. Edify your brothers and sisters. Edify. Bring edification to your co-workers. Amen. Let them see the light of Christ inside of you. We are Christians. We ought to conduct ourselves like Christians. Amen. It's been a crazy week. And I've had this client, man, that has just nudged me and nudged me. And every time I'm like, man, Lord. But I know that like when I prepare a message, like I said, it's got to minister to me before it ministers to you. And it was ministering to me. Amen. And this client was trying to accuse me of this and that. And it wasn't true. <clears throat> and each time <clears throat> I would humble myself and just apologize like man you know I apologize if that's what you think but that's not really what's going on but he was an individual that he had bad credit he had no income and he wanted a loan so I went out to go get him a private money loan and it's just you know I, I worked I worked above and beyond for this guy but but sometimes we get those but we have to understand the Bible says let no unwholesome word cut him out of our mouth amen let no unwholesome word come out of our mouth. Amen. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1 says this. Amen. He says, Paul says, Therefore, there, therefore be imitators of God. Remember, we're Christians. We are to be imitators of Christ. A follower of Christ. That's what a Christian is. As beloved children. And walk in love just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up for us, an offspring and a sacrifice as a fragrant aroma. You know what I see all the time? I see people on Facebook that, that say they're Christians bashing people, man. Bam. And I'm like, man, hey. Sometimes I'll send them an inbox message like, hey, bro, hey, sister, you really shouldn't conduct yourself like that, man. Because it's on Facebook. People can see you're dropping your fruit, amen. There's nobody in here like that, though, right? Amen. Stop bashing people, man. Start speaking life into their situation, into their circumstances. Even if they're coming against you, speak life. The Bible says it that 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 we are to be the light of the world. Amen. To love your enemies, man. Speak life. Begin to do what the Bible tells you to say, and you're gonna watch the progress. Amen. <clears throat> you're gonna watch the progress. He says in verse. Three, but sexual immorality or impurity or greed must never not be mentioned among you as is proper among the saints. And therefore, and there must be no filthiness or foolish talk. Amen? 
or vulgar joking, which are not fitting, he says. See, the Bible tells us not to be like that. But some of us, or some of you, some people out there are like that. Amen? And, and, and the, the, the non-Christians are looking at us that are supposed to be Christian and says, well, if that's a Christian, then I'm a Christian too. They talk just like me. They conduct themselves just like me. So I'm a Christian too. Now you got the whole Paulist people out there labeling themselves a Christian because they're watching other supposed Christians and they're seeing the fruit within them, the way they're conducting themselves. Now they say, you know what? Hey, I fall right in that category as well. Separate yourself. Amen? God said, I have consecrated you. Separate yourself. Amen? Verse 6. See that no one deceives you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Woo, the wrath. The wrath of God. <coughs> Amen. Verse 7. Therefore, do not become partners with them. You were once darkness. You were once, say it with me. You were once. I was once darkness. He says, you were once darkness. But now you are the light in the Lord. <coughs> you were once darkness. He says, but now you are the light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Walk, conduct yourself as children of light. For the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Verse 10. As you try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord, do not participate. In the useless deeds of darkness, but, he, but, but instead even expose them. Let's stop there for a minute. Do not participate in the useless deeds of darkness, but instead expose them. But indeed expose them. You know what I see? I see people engaging in, in, in filthiness. In debates and arguments that they shouldn't even be engaging in. The Bible says that be a good soldier. A good soldier will never entangle himself in the affairs of the world. Amen? And that means that we're just focused on the things of God and the kingdom of God and doing what God has called us. Don't worry about what's going on to the left. Don't worry about what's going on to the right. Don't worry about who's arguing over here. Don't worry about who's arguing over there. Don't you jump in the middle of that argument and start dropping your fruit and start getting mad and start conducting yourself in a manner that you shouldn't be conducting yourself. Amen? Hallelujah? He says, do not participate in the useless deeds of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is disgraceful even to speak of the things which are done by them in secret. Amen? Can I get a witness this evening? Amen? You understand what God is saying? <clears throat> if you and I Call ourselves Christians, you better show the fruit of God. Now I'm telling you, it's not going to be an overnight thing. But every day that you get up, yesterday is gone, tomorrow's not here, all we have is today. All you have is today to conduct yourself in the manner that God has called you to conduct yourself as a true Christian. Not those that say are they're Christians and they're still hanging out in the bars and the clubs. And they're still out there pisteandoing and, and partying on the weekends and slamming down and, and riding with their locotes and friends and, and doing all those things. And they're, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. While they're drinking a beer. Come on now. Where is God in that? Don't be one of those people. We are cristianos. We are Christians. We are children of God. The word of God, the Greek word of Christian is to be a follower of Christ, to obey his commandments. Amen. Don't be half-stepping because you're giving Christianity a bad name. Amen. I'm not talking to anybody in here. I'm talking to those that are going to hear it later on because I know we ain't got those type of people in here. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Verse 13, he says, but all things become visible when they are exposed by the light. Amen. For everything that becomes visible is light. For the re this reason it says, Awake sleeper and arise from the dead, he says. And Christ will shine on you. He's telling you, wake up. 
wake up and rise up as a Christian that you're supposed to be. And he says, and Christ will shine on you and shine through you. The anointing will fall on you and flow through you so that those that are standing next to you will understand like, whoa, there's something different about this brother. There's something different about this sister. Amen. There's something about them. It's the anointing that is flowing out of you that they can feel the presence of God on you because you are a Christian and you're walking the way that God wants you to walk. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Or they look at you and like, hey, he says he's a Christian, but he conducts himself just like him who isn't a Christian. Amen. Amen. The world is watching you. Your family is is watching you your co-workers are watching you what do they see what do they see in you hey, come on somebody hallelujah amen thank you alicia she says philippians 2 13 for it is god who works in you to will and to act on behalf of his good purpose praise the lord amen listen to this he says right here Making the most of your time because the days are evil. It grips my heart today, brothers and sisters. It, 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 I'm going to share with you, man. I'm going to share with you, right? It grips my heart. There's so many people that I know that grew up in the same lifestyle as me, the same background as me, came from the gangs, came from the drugs, came from the alcohol, and today they're saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, and they don't want to go out to the streets, man. I've invited so many people. You know that the city of San Jose is looking for the church's help? Amen. The city of San Jose, I'm part of the mayor's gang prevention task force on the faith-based side here. And there are very few churches that are in there involved in the mayor's gang prevention task force. And they have asked me before, Pastor John, why aren't more churches involved? Why aren't more churches out here doing this? Amen. Why aren't they involved in this? Man, don't they know that the city, the city doesn't want to separate state and church. The city of San Jose wants the help of the church. Where are my brothers and sisters? That live the, the La Vida Loca have come out of it. Why can't we gather together and go out to those streets like we used to when we were gangbanging? Amen? Why? Because they're complacent. They're comfortable in their church now. Amen? But there's a need in our city, man. I can tell you there's only probably two or three churches that are involved in the Mayor's Gang Prevention Task Force. There's a need. Man, if you want to get involved, come, come. Call me, man. Come under the, the umbrella. It doesn't matter what umbrella. As long as we're out there doing the work of the Lord, and I'm talking about going into the hot spots in the city of San Jose, where the gangs are, where the drugs are, and going in there after murders, after shootings, and after stabbings, and going in there and grabbing a hold of these people and telling them about the love of God because secular programs are doing that but not the body of Christ. Amen? I'm like David Wilkerson going out there by myself. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah? Come on, don't be afraid. Don't be intimidated. There was a young man that I met years ago. He came from the gangs, all tattooed y todo. One day I was talking to him. I told him, I said, hey, brother, have you ever thought about going to the streets? I was going to try to take him out to the streets with me. I said, you ever thought about going to the streets? And sharing your testimony, and he turned around and looked at me and goes, man, them streets are dangerous. Oh, I didn't say nothing. I just said, okay. I'm like, you helped them streets become dangerous. You were gangbanging out there. And now that you're serving Christ, they're dangerous to you? But when we were running amok for the devil, we had no problem out there doing it? Amen? He says, make the most of your time, because the days are evil. Amen? Therefore, he says in verse 17, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. God has given us instructions. The disciples were out there preaching the word to all the world. Amen. <clears throat> but you and I, we can't get nobody out in those streets. Amen. And I'm not talking about going on a street corner and shouting the name of Jesus. Yeah, we could do that. But I'm talking about going into the devil's kingdom, into the devil's playground and witnessing to people. See, every one of you have a story to tell. And I remember telling somebody, let's go to the streets. And they said, you know what, Pastor John? I've never been a drug addict. And I've never been a gang member. I don't know if I can reach them. Well, guess what I tell them? Jesus was never a sinner. But look at who we reach, the sinners. It's not you who does it. It's the Spirit of the Lord flowing out of you that is going to touch them. It's the anointing of God that's going to touch them. Amen? 
Anyway, let's go. <clears throat> God has given us instructions. The disciples were out there preaching the word to all the world. 2 Corinthians 13.1 says this. 2 Corinthians 13.1 says this. Since Paul's first letter, the Corinthian church has been swayed by false teachers. Amen? And stirred the people against Paul. They proclaimed that he was fake. He was fickle, proud, unimpressive in appearance. Amen? So when Paul, let me tell you a little about the Corinthian church. The Corinthian church was, they were in sin, man. They were in sin. They were in sin. And they didn't believe Paul when Paul came. They claimed that Paul was fickle, proud, unimpressive in appearance and speech. That he was dishonest and unqualified as an apostle Jesus of Jesus Christ. Amen. How many of you, <clears throat> how many of you said your pastors or your leaders said, I can't use you unless you have a degree, unless you go to school. The apostles didn't go to school. They walked with Jesus. <clears throat> they took the word and ran with it. Amen. They thought Jesus, they thought Paul was, was unqualified as an apostle. What qualifies one? The Spirit of the Lord. Amen. Back in the days, they didn't say you needed a degree. Amen. They were anointed and sent out. They were ordained and sent out. Go. Go. But today, you got to have four years of school. You got to be a theologian and all these other things. I'm like, man, go. Amen. <clears throat> So they thought, that, thought that's who Paul was. So Paul had sent Titus to Corinthian to deal with these difficulties. And upon his return, he was rejoiced to hear the Corinthians change their heart. Now I'm talking about in 1 Corinthians, amen. They were living this life against the things of God. And Paul knew it. And he sent Titus to go deal with these guys. Amen. And then Paul wrote the letter to express his thanks, giving to the repentant majority and appeal to the rebellious minority to accept his authority. Amen. Throughout the book, he defends his conduct, character, and calling as an apostle. See, I've been called. Amen. I've been called by Christ. And there's nobody. I've had so many encounters with God. And November 13th is the day you're going to hear my testimony and how I got saved. Amen. That would be 30 years serving God. November 13th. God willing I make it to them. Amen. Praise the Lord. So here was Paul coming to the second to the Corinthians again in chapter 2, in 2 Corinthians. He says, this is the third time. This is the third time that I'm coming to you. On the testimony of two or three witnesses, every matter shall be confirmed. He goes, I have previously said when I was present the second time, and though now absent, I say in advance to those who have sinned in the past, and to all the rest as well, that if I come again, I will not spare anyone. He's telling them, if I come back and you're still in sin, you haven't repented and you haven't changed your life, he will, I says, I will spare no one. And that's what God is saying. When he comes back, if you haven't changed, if you haven't repented and you're still dwelling in sin, he will not spare you. Amen. Amen. He says, in verse three, since you are seeking proof of the Christ who speaks to me, who is not weak toward you, but mighty in you. For indeed he was crucified because of weakness, yet he lives because of the power of God. For we too are weak in him, yet we live with him because the power of God directed towards you. Amen. God has empowered you and I, brothers and sisters. There's no reason, no excuse why we should be fornicating with the world, why we should be hanging out with the world, why you should be hanging out in clubs, in bars, be standing, drinking, and saying you're a Christian. Come on, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. Somebody, you're going to grab this tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. He says this in verse 5. Test yourself. To see if you are in the faith. Examine yourselves, he says. Verse 5. Test you. Let me say it again. Test yourself to see if you are in the faith. Examine yourselves. Or do you not recognize this about yourselves? That Jesus Christ is in you. Unless indeed you fail the test. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. He says, test yourselves. Take an inventory. Check yourself, man. The old saying, check yourself before you wreck yourself. 
He says, test yourself to see if you are in the faith. Examine yourself. Or do you not recognize this about yourself? That Jesus Christ is in you? Unless, indeed, you fail the test. Verse 6. But I expect that you will realize that we ourselves do not fail the test. Now we pray to God that you do nothing wrong. Not so that we ourselves may appear approved but that you may do what is right. Though we may appear unapproved, for we cannot do anything against the truth, but only for the truth. For we rejoice when we ourselves are weak, but you are strong. This we also pray, that you become mature. What does mature mean? Amen. See, we were once children. And when we were children, we conducted ourselves as our children. But now, we are mature, or we should be mature. We need to conduct ourselves as mature individuals. And I'm not talking about in our lives, because as we grow in our ages every year, every year as we get a little bit older, we start conducting ourselves with a little bit of maturity, amen? And I'm talking about the same thing in Christianity, man. As you grow in your years of God, that there's got to be, you start conducting yourselves as mature individuals. Amen? He says that you become mature. Verse 10, for this reason, I am writing these things while absent, so that when present, I need not use severity in accordance, amen, in accordance with the authority with the Lord, which the Lord gave me for building up and not for tearing down. Paul says that I don't want to come and have to deal with you, man. God says, I don't want to have to come and have to deal with you. You and I don't know when Jesus is coming back, but I'm going to tell you right now, we're pretty darn close. Amen. The Bible says he's coming like a thief in the night. A thief doesn't call you and say, hey, I'm coming to rob your house tonight. He just shows up. Nobody knows. And there's people out there that talk about this and talk about prophecy. Prophecy is being fulfilled. That's right. But yet, nevertheless, we still don't know when. It could be tonight. It could be tomorrow. Amen. And if you're dabbling in sin, and if you haven't become that mature Christian that you should be, whether you're five years in Christianity, ten years in Christianity, then guess what? God's going to deal with you. Amen? Paul says in verse 5, test yourselves. Test yourselves to see if you are in the faith. Examine yourselves. Or do you not recognize this about yourselves, that Jesus Christ is in you, unless indeed you fail the test? I pray that none of you that are listening now or later fail the test. Amen? I want to see every one of you in heaven when we get there. But I'm going to tell you, that isn't enough. There are brothers, there are people on your left and to your right, in front of you and behind you, that don't know Jesus and need to know Jesus. Then I pray that this message stirs you up, man. There's a stirring in your spirit that says, you know what, Pastor John, man? I want to go. There's a need for women. There's a need for sisters in the mayor's gang task force. There's a need for sisters to go out and witness to the female gang members. There's some hardcore female gang members that some of you know. Some of you came from that lifestyle, so you know. There's some hardcore women out there that are involved in gangs. And there's a need. There's not too many churches that are part of the mayor's gang task force that are doing the intervention and prevention and the outreach. Amen? Not too many. Two or three. And they're not even a full congregation. They're just two or three individuals from two or three different churches. Me and probably two other churches out there. Amen. And the city asked, Pastor John, why aren't there more churches involved? Amen. Free commercial. If you want to get involved, if you want to go, all you got is message me, man. We're not under an umbrella. We're under the umbrella of Christ. It's not about an entity, a church name. It's about kingdom building. Amen winning souls you can bring flyers from your own church i don't care as long as we're out there reaching the the people if they go to your church praise god to me it's not about what church they go to as long as we get them to a church as long as we lead them to salvation amen praise the lord let's go he says if therefore they could prove themselves not to be reprobates not to be rejected of christ he trusted they would know that he was not a reprobate a reprobate is a person who is unprincipled and a person with no morals. Amen. He says, I, I pray that you're not a reprobate, man. I pray that you can see that God is inside. Amen. Amen. I pray. I pray that you're not a reprobate, he says. 
A reprobate person is an unprincipled person, a person with no morals. Amen? With no morals. When the, what the Apostle Paul here says of the duty of the Corinthians to examine themselves with the particular view already mentioned is applicable to the great duty of all who call themselves Christians. We should be examining ourselves every day to examine themselves concerning their spiritual state. Amen? I'm careful, man. When I deal with people, like I was telling you about the client the other, earlier in the message, when I deal with people like that, I shut my mouth and I think before I speak because I don't want to say an unwholesome word or I don't want to say anything that may think and or mislead them or think wrong about who I am. That's why you'll find, I'll apologize to people, man, before they start assuming that I'm this individual. I'll say, you know what, I'm sorry. I'm not that man. I'm, I'm sorry if it came out like that. I'm sorry if it went like that. Amen? Because I want them to understand, I'm not that individual that you think I am. I am a child of God. Amen? And I'm not afraid or ashamed to apologize. Even if I'm not wrong. Amen? Just to, the other person will have peace. Because I'm not trying to bring any strife between anybody. Amen? He says to examine ourselves concerning your spiritual state. We should examine whether we be in the faith because it is a matter in which we may be easily deceived. And wherein a deceit is highly dangerous, we are therefore concerned to prove our own selves, to put the question to our own souls, whether Christ be in us or not, and Christ, be, Christ is in us, except we be reprobates, so that neither we are true Christians. Amen? Or we are great cheats. And what a reproachful thing is that for a man to know himself and to not know his own mind. Don't be cheating Christ. Don't be fake. Amen? I'm sorry. I'm sorry if that offends you. Somebody told me recently I preached a message. And somebody told me it offended some people. You know what the Word of God says in the book of Hebrews? This Word will be a stumbling block and offensive to some. It will offend those that are walking in disobedience. So if God's Word offends you, when a pastor or a preacher is speaking and it's the Word of God he's using and it offends you, it's not the pastor. It's not the preacher. It's because of the way that you're walking. You only get offended because you're walking contrary to the things of God. Amen. That's when you'll get offended. Amen. Not here though, right? He says that. Test yourselves to see if you are in the faith. Examine yourselves. Do you not recognize this about yourself? That Christ Jesus is in you unless you fail the test. Don't fail the test. Listen to me. Verse 10. He says, For this reason, I am writing these things while absent. So that when present... I need not use severity in accordance with the authority which the Lord gave me for building up and not for tearing down. Paul says, if I have to, I will use severity against you. He was talking to the disobedient Christians. Amen. He was talking to those that say they're a Christian, but are walking contrary to the word of God. Amen. Come on, somebody. Can I get a witness tonight? Can I get an amen, Pastor John? Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen to me. The threat itself, that if he came again, he would not spare obstinate sinners and such as were not feeling shame or regret about one's actions. See, some of us aren't even shameful about the things that we're doing contrary to the Word of God. Some of you have no regret about the things that you're doing. You find it okay to be hanging out in the clubs. You find it okay to be hanging out in the bars without any regret. Amen? Oh, come on. <laughs> Such were not feeling shame or regret about one's actions or attitudes in their scandalous enormities. He had told them before he feared God would humble him among them because he shouldn't find some who had sinned and not repented. I'm going to tell you that confession is very important. The minute you sin 
you better confess because confession sin separates us from God we we are sin separates us from God you keep sinning without confession before you know it, you're way out here the minute you confess it brings you right back you fall short ten times you confess ten times in a day so that nothing separates you from God you keep coming back to Christ amen <clears throat> he says because he should find some who had sinned and not repented and now he declares he would not spare such but would inflict would inflict church censors upon them which are thought to have been accompanied in those early times with visible and extraordinary tokens of divine displeasure amen now listen though it is God's gracious method to bear long with sinners Christ bears long with sinners amen yet he will not bear always at length he will come and he will not spare those who remain obstinate and not feeling shame or regret about one's actions or attitude notwithstanding all of his methods to reclaim and reform them see there comes a time the Word of God says that and we know this that God will never leave us nor forsake us amen he will never leave us nor forsake us we leave God and if you continue right here in what are these notes that I have shared after my study amen God now listen though it is God's gracious method to bear long with sinners yet he will not bear always at length he will come and he will not spare those who remain obstinate and not feeling shame or regret about one's actions or attitude notwithstanding all his method all his methods to reclaim and reform them amen see as long as you continue in the path and you say you're a Christian you've received Christ you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit but yet you continue to walk as your former self in your former ways amen and you don't have no regret you don't repent you don't have any shame if you take a look at the book of Romans chapter 1 and maybe I'll share about that one day Romans chapter 1 the Word of God says that okay you want to keep living like that you want to keep doing that the Word of God says that he turns you over he turns you over to that lustful deceitful way that you want to keep living you say here you Satan have them here world have them amen because you want to continue in that path you never want to come to a place in your walk with God where God says you know what sabes que go man go live that life then don't go no you never want to come to a place where he takes his hand off of you amen because Romans chapter 1 talks about that that they would rather serve the creature than the Creator amen and that's the same thing that Paul was talking about right here because Paul wrote Romans 2 and that's what he's talking about you have an obligation to conduct yourself we're not perfect people we're not perfect and God knows that but there better be some progress in your walk there better be some fruit that you are showing amen that you'll get past I mean look Pastor Grant or look God I'm growing man that God can see some fruit in your life and he can be pleased about the things that you're doing not look down to discuss say oh my God not like when he looked in the book of Genesis chapter 6 the word of God says he looked down and he was he was sad that he created man don't make God don't allow God come to you and, and look at you like man I'm sorry that I made this person man what is wrong with them Jesus died for them and yet they continue to go back to their old ways they continue to conduct themselves like they never knew Jesus amen don't allow yourself to get to a place where that happens in your life amen and the only one that can stop it is you the only way they can help you grow is you you got to put in the footwork see some of you got a job and you've worked your way up the ladder you put the work in to get up where you're at amen to make the amount of money that you're working you got to put that much more work in for God and the things of God so that you're growing in the things of Christ amen amen hallelujah you know when I preach when I teach I don't I don't memorize things I, I write my notes and I write my word the rest is all the Holy Spirit man 
So if it's penetrating your heart, praise God. Praise God, amen. It's all the Holy Spirit. It is in me. So check it out. We're about to close this up. Let's check it out. Amen. <clears throat> the thread itself, the thread itself is that if he came, he would not spare obstinate sinners. Amen. God wants you to grow. God wants you to grow, bottom line. That is not to proceed the utmost extremity in the exercise of the power which the Lord has given him as an apostle to revenge all disobedience. Paul had the power and the authority to deal with the disobedient people, amen. He had the power and the authority. And so do you and I. Amen. A lot of people say, um, only God can judge me. First of all, God will judge you. But second of all, that's wrong. That's not a biblical statement. And then there's other people. Do not judge lest you be judged the same. You know what? Maybe I ought to preach on that too because they take that scripture out of context. But here it is. John chapter 7 verse 24. And it's not part of my notes. Jesus says this. He says, Do not judge according to appearance, but judge with the righteous judgment. The word righteous means according to the word of God. Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, I believe it is. He says, it's not my job to judge those outside of the church, but it is definitely our job to judge those inside of the church. Amen? We are to judge the world. We are to judge the people of the world. We're to love the people of the world. Don't judge their actions. Don't judge what they're doing. Love them and share the love of God with them and share the word of God with them. But it is definitely our job to judge those inside of the church who proclaim they're Christians, who go to church and continue to dabble in sin and to, do, to live in sin. Amen? To continue... To be out there fornicating with the world. Amen. So only God can judge me. Throw it out. Don't judge me lest you, ju lest you be judged the same. Throw it out. Amen. Maybe if you want I'll share, I'll share a, pa a message of scriptures on that as well. On do not judge lest you be judged the same. And show you how they're taking the, con the word out of context. Amen. And I'll share with you scripture after scripture. When we are to judge. Amen. So don't believe the lie from the pit of hell. That your church isn't supposed to judge. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Ready right here. Let's go. We're going to close. 2 Corinthians 10.6. This is Paul. Amen. And we are ready to punish all disobedience whenever your obedience is complete. Amen. We are ready to punish all disobedience whenever your obedience is complete. Amen. I want you to understand if you say you're a Christian then you have an obligation to walk as a Christian. We're not perfect. We're not going to be perfect. But we strive for righteousness and holiness every day. We have to. Amen. And let nobody come into your life and sway you another way, any other way. Let nobody come into your life and deceive you. Let nobody come into your life. If you know that it's wrong, let nobody come into your life like the serpent came into Eve and say, Is that what God really said? Amen? Let nobody come into your life to make you question the Word of God and your walk with God. If the people come into your life, man, get rid of them, man. Get them out of your life. Because they're sent by the enemy to try to distract you and derail you from the things of God amen they're sent by the enemy let nobody do that to you get rid of them get them out of your life finally chapter verse 5 again test yourself to see if you are in the faith examine yourselves or do you not recognize this about yourself that Jesus Christ is in you he should be in you unless indeed you fail the test. Come on. Unless indeed you fail the test. I've seen so many people walk away from God. And they're not here today. They're not here today. 
powerful people in Christ. Prayer warriors. Doing the, in the streets. And they left the Lord, man. And they're not here today. And you can only hope that in their last moment before they died, that they were able to cry out to God. Because if not, what can I say? And it grieves my heart, man. It grieves my heart that there are more Christians in our city, there are more Christians in your city, than there probably are gang members and drug addicts, and we as a body can't get out there to reach these souls. Can you imagine, man, how many churches in our area and San Jose alone are here? And if we came together, you know, the only unanswered prayer of Jesus is found in John chapter 17. He says, where the body of Christ become one. There's so many, so much competition between churches, between ministries. One trying to do, I didn't even know how churches got involved in car shows, man. But there are so many churches trying to outdo the next church with their car shows. Bringing this entertainment, man. Amen. Trying to outdo the last church. Instead of coming together and saying, man, let's get down for Jesus like we did in the world. Amen. I remember back in the days, man, when we would fight. I remember our first gang fight against um, Barrio Lomas Locos. It was v &H. I'm from v &H. I was one of the first originals when we started v &H, Barrio Norte Homeboys. And when we went to that park, to Roosevelt Park, we were supposed to play somebody else, some other wadi with football, and we got a call, like, we're going to meet at Roosevelt Park. Our president was going to fight the president of Lomas, and they went down and they handled back. And then they came back, said, all right, we're going to fight each other. There was only about 15 of us, man. And there was more dudes from Lomas. But all of a sudden, man, truckloads and carloads of dudes just started coming to Roosevelt Park, man. Vicky's Town and... Salsi Puedes and just different barrios started coming to back up Lomas against us. We were a big barrio, but against us, and we only had like 15 or 16 guys, man. And there was like a hundred or something from different barrios that came together to back up that barrio against us like we were the enemy. Like, whoa, there it was, 15 of us. Amen. But can you imagine if we had that same mentality in Christ today? Where we all just gathered and it doesn't matter what church you're from. Amen. That we would just come together as, as kingdom minded under the umbrella of Jesus Christ. And went out to those streets. How effective. Amen. Bringing Norteños and Sureños together to hit the streets. Because I know some Sureños that are serving Christ today. And bringing everybody together and going out there and say, Look, at sabes que? this is so and so. And sharing the love of God. And letting them see, because I'm going to tell you right now, man. I'm going to tell you right now. Roosevelt Park, a few years back, we were out there and we were talking to me. And, and, and I, I get a lot of the city of San Jose outreach workers will back me up more than I get other ministries to back me up. And these vatos aren't even saved, but they'll go out to the streets with me and they'll go out and do things with me. I'm like, hey, man, can you guys come out and help out? And they'll come out and help. So we were out at Roosevelt Park and we were about to do it. I was going to do a handball outreach tournament out there. And uh, one of the guys from Roosevelt Park, he says, hey, man, he goes, uh, we don't want this church here. We don't want this church here. We don't want uh, dropouts here. We don't want Sureños here. And I'm like, man, what, what's, what's with this church? He goes, man, he goes, that church fights against that church. They Even the world can see the division among the churches, man. He goes, the churches are like gangbanging. This church is fighting against that church, man. They don't like each other. And we're all under the umbrella of Christ. Can you imagine how that makes Jesus feel? I don't want to be a part of that. That's why I just kick it on my own, man. That's why I just go out there by myself because I don't want the animosity, man. I remember I did a handball tournament out there. And I remember one day I put a church's name on there helping me out do the handball tournament. And a pastor from another church came and he says, hey, why is that person's name on there, man? That's my territory. Roosevelt Park is my territory. And I'm like, look, man. I told him, I says, wait a minute, man. We are all out here trying to do the same thing. Reach the souls, man. There's enough souls for everybody. This isn't a barrio. This is streets, man. We are not a gang. And they made me take that other church's name off because that wasn't their area. And then they came back and they apologized. Said, hey, you can put it. I'm like, man, you know what? I don't want no part of it. I'm not putting nobody's name on there now. We're just going to do it. But can you imagine 
The people, at the, the homeboys at Roosevelt Park knew, they, they understood what was going on. The two churches, one was trying to help and another one was mad. And I had to try to explain that, like, hey, what happened with it? You know what I mean? Because they're not stupid. Can you imagine how Jesus looks down on us? Like, wow. Amen? Test yourself to see if you're in the faith. Examine yourselves. Or do you not recognize this about yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you unless indeed you fail the test? Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's my message for you tonight. Examine yourself. I pray that it ministered to you. I pray that you got some nuggets, that you got some, some a big old bowl of menudo out of it or whatever it is. Amen. That it fed your spirit and that it helps you. Because what God has me doing is equipping the saints, equipping disciples, so that you can go out and equip disciples, so that we can reproduce what God has given us for the next person and the next person, because Jesus is coming back. Don't be the one that Jesus looks down, that God looks down and says, oh man, what are they doing? What are they doing? What are they doing with that beer in their hand? Saying, thank you, Jesus. What are they doing in that club? What are they doing? What are they doing out there? Amen? 2 Corinthians chapter 6, the Bible says to separate yourself from unbelievers. It says, you have nothing in common. What does light have in common with darkness? What does Jesus have in common with the devil? He didn't walk the world. With, with the hand, holding hands with the devil? Why are you out there doing those things? Come on, Pastor John, knock it off. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's my message tonight. Amen. We are going to go ahead and close right now. And I'm going to ask you to bow your head. I'm going to say this prayer, and you can repeat it with me. You can say it out loud, or you don't have to say it out loud at all. We can't hear you. You can only hear me. And uh, if you want to repeat it, repeat it with me. And then after we're done praying that prayer, I'm going to pray for you guys. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I come before you today, God, and I ask for forgiveness of my sins, of anything I said or did, Lord, that was not of you, God. I ask you to forgive me tonight, God. Lord, maybe I'm not walking the true walk that I should be walking. Forgive me today, Lord, and help me to start over, God. To pick up where I left off and continue in this walk, Lord. To continue moving forward with you, God. From this day forward, God, I give you my life again. Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, Father God, I invite you into my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, we pray right now, Lord God, for every person that heard this message tonight, God. I ask and pray, Father God, that it fell on good soil, God, that it would bear fruit, Father God, and the branches that aren't bearing fruit, God, would be cut off from their life, Father God. I pray for conviction, God. I pray for, for repentance, Father God. I pray that we would have shame in the things that we do that are not of you, Father God, so that it would drive us to come back to you, Father. I pray that you would wrap your arms around them, God, and help them grow in the things of you, Father God. And we thank you, Lord, for your wonderful word, your mercy and grace. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless each and every one of you, amen. Um, if there's anybody out there in the San Jose area that wants to get involved, hit the streets. Or you know anybody that may want to get involved, hit the streets. Let's do it. Let's work. Because the city of San Jose is looking for the church's help. In Jesus' name, God bless you. And this will conclude tonight's message until two weeks from now. In Jesus' name, amen.